Hello and thanks for watching this Cloud9 ERP Solutions video and subscribing to our YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to talk about approval maps, how to create them, use them, and work with them. The first thing we'll do is we'll go over to our assignment and approval maps. And you'll notice that we have approval and assignment maps. We're going to open this one up, sales quote approval to get started. Take a look at this one. So in the upper right hand corner, we have the entity type and that's what we're putting the approval on. So without the approval, we stop the document in its tracks, meaning the status can't continue until the document is approved. It's part of the workflow. On the left hand side, notice the steps. So the steps start with this one right here. And this step is the description is large discount. And essentially what happens here is if no prover is found, we go to the next step, meaning I'm going to go through these different rules. And if I can't find an approver, I think matches, which we'll get into in a little bit, then we're going to go to the next step. And if you saw our video on assignments, you'll know that you can move things up and down. So for example, I can highlight this one and I can move it up in the order. So maybe I want to check large orders before discounts. But again, if no approver is found, we're going to go to the next step. So execute step allows us to, when we get to the last step, we can always execute this one. However, in Acumatic, if we select this, if the previous steps found no approvers, then we could stop it right there. So you have an option here, and this goes to the complexity of how you want to set up your approval maps. Now, if we jump into one of these steps, you can see the first part is there's conditions with a description. So we've described this as over 50%. We need executive approval. We wrote that in. But the entity here is discount details. So this is the discount details tab on the sales quote where the discount percentage is greater than 50%. So if the conditions are true, well, then what do we do? Well, we assign the approver to Maxwell Baker. And we also assigned it to the executive work group, although that's not necessary. You can blank that out and only assign it to a specific employee. Now, the next option is the wait time. So if Maxwell Baker is on vacation and we let so much time expire, well, then it can go into the next step. And then on approval, once we approve this, we could just complete the step, which means it'll go to the next one. Or we could require that we go to all approvals, we collect all approvals. So in other words, we're gonna go through all of this and grab an approval regardless. Or if this is the only thing needed, we could stop right here and approve the document and let it be on its way so that a quote, in this case, a quote could be converted to an order and you could start the shipping process. At the bottom, we have reason settings. So we could ask the user to give us a reason why they're approving it. You can make that optional or you can require it. But we could also ask a reason why they may have rejected it so that I can communicate that to my customer or my salesperson or whatever it is. So that's the approval map there. Now, if we go back and we create our own approval map, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna assign an entity. So maybe we wanna pick, for example, a transaction, a cash transaction. So we'll add a step. And this is going to be just our only step. We'll call it the first step. Again, this can all be the same because we only have one step. And if we go down to our first rule, we can select our entity. And in this case, it's going to be the cash transaction. And we want if the amount is greater than $1,000, and what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna assign it to Maxwell Baker to approve. Yep, we gotta give it a name. And we'll save it. 
So now the first thing we need to do, this is a cash transaction. The first thing we need to do, and you're gonna find this everywhere in Acumatic, is define the approval map for that area of the software. So if we go to banking and we go to cash management preferences, and we go over to approval, you'll notice there's nothing here. If we click the plus button, we can add our approval map. Notice Acumatica filters it because it's the only applicable approval map for this entity. We'll save it. And notice it's active. So this will go active as soon as we hit the save button. Additionally though, there's approval notification. And we'll take a look at this in a second, but essentially this is the notification you wanna send out to users when an approval is required. You may put some additional information in there and we'll get back to that. Let me hit the save button here. And now we'll go in and we'll create a new transaction. So we'll pick our bank account. We'll pick an entry type and we'll give it a reference number that's required preference. And if we save it, $900, we remove it from hold. Notice it lets us get to the balance state. So if we make it 1,001 and save it and we put it on hold and remove the hold, notice it now is pending approval. So at this point, you can see under approval details, you can see who it's assigned to. A notification template would go out to Maxwell Baker. Additionally, under task and approvals, you can also see all your approvals there in more of an inbox format. So if you go over there, you'll see them in addition to the template notification. So now if I click on approve, I've now been able to get this status over to balance. So now that we can pick it up and of course the rest of the workflow allows me to release it and move on. So that's approvals that allows you to stop the workflow and get someone or some people to approve a transaction before it can move on to the next step. And if we go back to approval maps, you can see under our conditions, we could do a number of things here. Notice there's an operator here for and and or. So I can add as many conditions as I want. Notice also under rule actions, we have the ability to select the approver, but you can also pull the employee from the document. So you can do that by selecting this. And then over here under the plus button, you can see the entities and all the fields under the entities where you can maybe pull that employee from. And then the other option is employees by filter. So this allows you to filter and maybe say, well, any employees, and you have every single field in the employee table, any employee that has such and such data in their employee record could be a condition, or you could do an or symbol. So this is another way to make your assignments, your approval assignments, more dynamic instead of hard coding it to a specific employee. Now, earlier we had talked about notification templates. What happens when we assign an approver to a specific document? What happens? So if we go over to, for example, purchasing, just to take a look at the example, and we look at the preferences there, purchase order preferences. We go to approval. Again, notice there's no template here. But if you click over here, you can find all your template notifications. Now to create one, we can go to notification templates and we'll open it up. And if we wanted to, we could search for some existing ones that are in the system. So here's an expense claim pending approval notification. Here's an expense receipt. Here's a purchase order awaiting approval. So let's take a look at that one. And you could see the example here. So the template has a description. You can put anything in there that you want. 
to be able to identify it. So when you're looking for it for further changes, notice the screen name is purchase order. So that you need to select when you're defining this notification template. Where are we sending it from? So the email notification template, you can have as many system email types in the software that you want. So in this case, we only have one, but maybe you have a purchasing email or maybe you have an administrative email or something along those lines. You could send it from a different email account and that's what this is. And then who do we send it to? Well, that should be pretty straightforward. We wanna send it to the approver. So the approver knows that there's an approval waiting. So for that, notice approval.ownerid.email. That's defined here already, and you could just copy and paste this. But double check the entity, because if we click here, you look up the magnifying glass, you have a couple of options. So the first one is entity, the second one's users. Users, we can hard code and pick a user in the system to automatically email to. Users, essentially employees. So this is filtering in the tree view by the first letter of the name. But entity allows us to be dynamic where we can pull the approver ID, the email ID, from the document uh, or the document's different entities. So these are different tabs on the purchase order. But typically, we want to pull this from the approval tab. And notice there's an email ID here under the owner. So you could see owner email, and that's what's selected up here. So whatever document you're associating this notification template with, you'll get those fields and you can dynamically link them. That also holds true for your CC and your BCC fields, as well as your subject heading. So this just says purchase order waiting approval. But what if we wanted to maybe add the number? So we can come over here and add purchase order number. So we could say, we'll just copy and paste this, or in this case, cut and paste this. We'll go back, purchase order, and we want the number. Maybe we'll put the number sign here. Is awaiting approval. And you could even say for maybe the vendor name. So we'll click this here, and we'll select vendor. And sometimes you have to play around for what the where the fields are located. So here it is for approval for vendor name. So that's good. So we could hit the save button here. So now if I was tasked with approving this, I could see purchase order number maybe one, two, three is awaiting approval for and the name of the vendor. Additionally, notice that there's HTML in this. So right now we're looking at the visual look, but if we click on HTML, this is the body of the message. You can copy and paste your HTML message here. So the easiest way to do that is if you open up Word, for example, and you make something nice and pretty here, maybe you put an image at the top, and then maybe you want some information. My recommendation is to you insert a table. So maybe you have some information about it. So this would be, for example, purchase order details, and you could say, order number, vendor name, order amount, and something along those lines. And then you could highlight these and update your table, delete the rows. And here we'll put the values in. So we could do that by, if we move this out of the way, and we just go to, we'll go back to the visual view, and we'll go to an open area and we'll say insert data field, and maybe we need the order number. Well, I think we know it from before, but we'll highlight it here, and this is the value we have. So we'll cut this, and we'll paste it here. And then we can insert, well, there's the vendor account name already. And maybe we need the amount total, which is also here. So in this particular template, they're free floating the text and simply typing it. But in this case, what we could do is put a table and then convert it to HTML. So it looks a little bit nicer. 
So once you're done with this, you can file in Word, you can file save as, and under save type, we can use web page filtered. And what this does is it makes it a very simple file with no header, no HTML header. So it just gives you the body for the most part. So if we were to save this, and then we're to open it up in Notepad, notice in Notepad, it starts at the body. That's what we want. We don't want anything above that. And we want to go to the end of the body. And if we copy this, we come back to message, and maybe we take out this section. We're going to take out this section. We really don't need the body part of it. But if we were to put it down below, maybe, we'll get rid of the body tags because we already pretty much have the body in it. And we'll take that those lines out. Now if we switch back to visual, you can see we've added a table here. And you could also remove the grid. You could do all this stuff in Word and then again save it again. Or if you're familiar with HTML, you could do it that way too. But once we save this, then if we go to our purchase order preferences, and we go to approval, over here we could select our template. And now anytime a purchase order goes into approval, this is the template that will be used. And we have one in the system. So if I go to a new purchase order, the threshold is, it looks like it's over 100K. So that's right there. So we'll close this. We'll create a new purchase order. And we'll add an item. Thousand of those. Save it. And... Again, we have our purchase order is on hold, so we'll remove the hold. Now it's pending approval. So if we were to go into our emails, and look at our outgoing emails, notice this is the email that was generated. We don't have our email connected, but you can see it's pending processing. If we open it up, you could see what Acumatica did. Again, it gave us the body of the message here with the amounts and stuff, but then our table is down here below. Also notice what Acumatica did with this default template notification. They put in a default URL, which you'll need to change, but this you can configure as a link so that when the user receives the email, they just need to click on this and it'll open up the purchase order in their web browser. They're logged in, great, it'll come right up. If they're not, it'll require them to log in and then they'll see the purchase order where from that screen, they can go in and approve it. So that's configuring approval maps in Acumatica. Thanks so much for watching this video and subscribing to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Have a great day.